I'll, I'll try to make two points. The first one is that we have something that's extremely computable uh, with explicit formulas, and I only see that as an advantage. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the second thing is that um, I think that should be useful for geometry group theory, so I'll try to point out a few uh, specific uh, questions there. Um, if you see a path between the two, uh, le let me know. <laughs> um, all right, so um, <clears throat> my goal for today is to um, Oh, last thing, I'm trying to write lecture notes. Uh, now that it's been recorded, I really have to do that. So they should be out sometime in the next months. Um, so my goal for today is to try to define a Coven of Zydel uh, categor categorical action that's uh, stated to our tinted groups, uh, and probably won't go much further than that. But I'll start with... Uh, So I'll start with um, authentic groups. And so I'll briefly recall about um, Coxeter diagrams first, Coxeter diagrams and Coxeter groups. So I'll start with the uh, long definition section. And um, uh, um, a Coxeter diagram is a graph um, with labeled edges, so with edges labeled in two, including to infinity, and infinity is included. Um, and I think that's it. So um, two is usually not depicted. So um, a two-labeled row <coughs> is usually not, not drawn. And so what we have is, well, it's going to be something like, I'll label my edges, my, my vertices. So it keeps the same one as my notes. All right. So the four here is for the edge, and the three is for the, the vertex. Um, all right, so to, to uh, Coxeter uh, diagrams is assigned a Coxeter graph, and the process is. If you do not label it, it's supposed to be three? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. And uh, three is not. Written. Thanks. Uh, so to not, uh, sorry, to um, a Coxeter graph gets assigned uh, a Coxeter group. And the group associated to um, such a graph has generators and relations where generators are associated to all edges, to all uh, vertices, and the relations are dictated by, by the edges. Where, so for any edge, we have um, SI, SJ, um, equals SJ, SI. And we also have um, SI square equals one. So um, we can somehow commute uh, to, a, to adjacent uh, uh, generators, uh, provided we have a long enough uh, alternating word of them. Um, 
All right, so in that spe uh, specific case, we get uh, S1, S2, S3, S4 as generators. Um, one and two um, have an infinite label, which means that they actually form a free subgroup. Um, one and three are related by one of these unlabeled uh, edges, which are, are the ones that are supposed to have a three. So we have S1, S3, S1 equals S3, S1, S3. Um, S3, S4, that's the longer one. S3, S4 equals S4, S3, S4, S3. And one should not forget that we have some uh, uh, not drawn edges. So um, one and four, two and three, and two and four uh, commute. So we have S2, S3 equals S3, S2. S2, S4 equals S4, S2. And S1, S4 equals S4, S1. And all SI squares are one. OK. Uh, so somehow the, the graph is supposed to be more convenient than this, than this long list of relations. Um, so uh, famous examples that you, you uh, surely know of are uh, in type AN, then that corresponds to uh, S n plus 1. And then we only have uh, uh, label 3. Um, and also, more generally, all value groups are coxeter groups. Okay. So um, there is right. So it's a classical result that we can classify all. all uh, Finite dimensional, um, sorry, all uh, finite val groups, um, all finite uh, coxeter groups. So there's a classification of uh, finite coxeter groups, uh, which are those type. Um, so they are classified by their the, uh, thinking type. So we have uh, AN, B, and C are the same. DN, uh, E6, E7, E8. And I only ever work in simply lace type, so this is where I, I need my list. Um, then we have F4, D2, H2, 3, 4, and IN. And I, I'm not going to draw them, but we, we won't use them. Uh, I will, I'm not going to use them this week. Um, all right, so um, what I actually care about is not coxeter graph, that uh, I care about artintids, uh, so coxeter groups, I, I care about artintids groups, so we're, we're going to, um, to move to, to the, the next level. Yeah, I can. So if you remember, for um, G gamma, we have this presentation by uh, generators and uh, these relations I, R i j and then S i square equals 1. And um, the artintid group associated to uh, gamma is going to, be, it's going to be almost the same thing. So same generators, same first set of relations but we just get rid of the, the square one. And uh, so there's an obvious map that uh, goes back to the original uh, Coxeter group by just imposing this, this uh, extra relation. And um, well, somehow this class of group is both very, very natural and also has tons of open questions. So in type A, uh, What we get are uh, break groups. Uh, and 
So let me take, for example, type A3. Then I have uh, three generators. The so sigma one is um, a braid with four strengths and the first two strengths crossing. Uh, sigma two is strengths two and three cross crossings and sigma three has strengths three and four crossings. And then, um, the relations have natural topological interpretations as well. I oh, shouldn't do that. So, uh, right. sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 1 should be equal to sigma 2, sigma 1, sigma 2. That translates into um, so 1, 2, 1 is. Two, one, two, which is the effect of having this middle strands passing from the left to the right through the crossing. So all of this, um, so we, we just have this dual description of a braid as a topological, uh, topologically inspired group and this presentation of it. Um, so, um, one interesting remark is that uh, it's only in very few cases uh, that we have pictures for, for these identity groups. Um, so namely, we have pictures in type um, A, affine type A, where we have braids on the annulus, uh, and type D and D tilde, uh, this is due to Alcock, and there are some uh, kind of obifold braids. But apart from these very specific cases, we have no, no, no topological interpretation for, uh, for identity groups, or at least no, no picture interpretations for identity groups. Did I forget one? Um, so uh, part of my point, part of my selling point for this covenant of Zydel thing is that um, in the cases where, we, where the, um, the, the diagrammatics fails uh, or lacks, um, all of these tools that we develop in, um, with Covenant of Zydel theory uh, should be relevant to play the same kind of game. Um, <clears throat> okay. One thing that's going to play uh, an important role is that we will care about specific sets of generators for our group. So I'll spend some time uh, telling you about uh, two sets of generators. Um, all right, so to tell you about yeah. let's go for the next one. Um, so we had we had this map from um, B gamma that goes down to G gamma, and uh, that just sends sigma i to S i. And so um, if one chooses, so let w equal si1, sik be uh, a reduced word in g gamma, uh, then one can define some leaves for w in uh, the identity group uh, b gamma. can lift uh, w to b gamma. For example, by saying that I'm only going to use positive lifts for, for the letters. So the trouble here is that si could be lifted as sigma i or sigma i inverse. I'm just going to use uh, positive, uh, positive letters. 
uh, sigma i1 to sigma ik. And um, one can choose that that doesn't depend on uh, an expression for the body. So I can choose for whichever reduced expression that I want, and I'll get to the same, uh, the same braid. Um, so one thing that one set of uh, braids that's uh, quite natural from this perspective is the one that we get by just lifting positively any element in, uh, in the Coxeter group. Um, Right, so uh, one um, set of generators that are uh, used is the one that we, we get from by lifting everything uh, positively. So um, uh, the long the long element uh, delta in uh, g gamma lifts. To uh, capital delta, um, which so in type A, which is where we get uh, most of my examples, we have um, a half twist. So something like uh, delta is uh, sigma n to uh, sigma one, sigma n minus one, sigma one, sigma two, sigma one. I think. Um, and I care about the following uh, set. So the interval between one and delta, which is uh, the positive lift of G gamma, this one has um, a lattice structure. And this will play a key role in, in use of uh, gas side theory in, in later proofs. Um, there's another set of fairly natural generators, both from the, the, the perspective of the Coxeter groups and, and braids, that I'll use as well. And but what, what I should say is that a reason to care for specific sets of generators is that um, when we try to do some geometry on the group, we care about, um, we, we need metrics. And uh, you, typically, the, the metrics will be given by the word lengths in some set of generators. And so we, care, we, we do care about the set of generators that we start from. So uh, I want to tell you about the dual gas side structure. Um, So uh, the reference for this is uh, Birman Coli, 
and basis. And so if we look, um, so first of all, let's choose a so-called uh, coxeter element, which is a product of all generators in, in some order. And so uh, to us in all examples, uh, I'll choose sigma 1 to sigma n. Um, all right. And this corresponds to choosing an orientation for the Dinkin diagram, for the, yeah, for the uh, Coxeter diagram. So here, I'm all in type A. Um, so you will make sure that a letter always appears, a letter that appears to the left of another one um, has, uh, sorry, the other way around. Um, if I have an, uh, an arrow that goes from uh, one vertex to another one, uh, the first vertex sh should appear to the left of the other one in the word. Um, so in G gamma, an interesting set of generators or interesting elements are reflections. Um, which are this t such that t square equals one. So of course the SIs uh, are reflections, but there is more than that. Um, and so um, one can get them as. Anything that appears as uh, T equals uh, W S I W inverse would be as well. Uh, and so the, the, the question is, how do we lift this up to the breakthrough? Because now we've started using inverses, and so it's like we have uh, more than one choice. So uh, so typically, how do you want to lift uh, S one S two S one? Um, and so we're going to use this Coxeter uh, word to, to make a choice of a pref uh, preferred um, lift. And so, um, all right, so I'll choose, um, so let's try to mimic this way to obtain all, uh, all reflections. And we'll take, uh, I'll define, so it, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, I want to define this interval between one and gamma as um, all subwords, or as left subwords, for writings of gamma as T1 to Tn, where uh, the Ti's are of the form beta sigma uh, J beta inverse. So somehow I want to generalize this reflection that we had as the conjugate of one of our basic generators by anything. Um, but uh, somehow I don't want to have them all. I only want to use, that, to use the ones that appear in some minimal factorization of, uh, of the Coxeter, uh, this Coxeter word. Um, all right, so for example, uh, if you start from gamma equals sigma 1, sigma 2 in type A2, 
Somehow the first step is to find all, all possible writings of, uh, of gamma. And so if you start playing with that, one clear thing is that we could try to permute uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2. So if we put sigma 2 on the left, then we should have sigma 2 inverse sigma 1, sigma 2. Um, and these, both of them are of this kind of generalized reflection uh, kind. So um, this is a, 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 an, an admissible writing for these rules. And I could as well try to push sigma 1 to the, to the right. And then I would have to insert sigma 1 inverse, sigma 1, sigma 2. And if one starts playing with, with this word sigma 1, sigma 2, you'll see that these are really the only, the only possibilities. So here we only have um, three atoms, which are sigma 1, sigma 2, and uh, sigma 2 inverse sigma 1, sigma 2. Once you realize that this equals sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 1 inverse, so that these two elements are the same. Um, and the, the whole interval between uh, 1 and sigma 1, sigma 2 in that case. Well, we don't have much more. We have sigma 1, sigma 2 at the top. It had three divisors, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 1 inverse. And um, it's a result of, of Birman Colli and Bessis that uh, we also have a lattice structure on this, uh, on this set. Is a lattice. Okay, and so again, so to, to us that's going to like write bigger. <laughs> um, to us, well, the reason why it's important is that typically when uh, running a proof, you want to make sure that um, you have some bit. You want to know all elements that are going to have some action on, on something, and you want to be able to take a GCD or LCM of all of these things, and for that one needs to have a notion of GCD and LCM. And this is what uh, lattice theory and Garcia theory give us. Um, okay, and in, uh, in type A, and actually in uh, all spherical type, uh, I could have a very explicit description By uh, in terms of roots, so um, if alpha is a root that I can write as uh, alpha i plus alpha i plus one plus alpha j, then I'll have uh, a corresponding uh, generator T alpha that I can define as uh, sigma i sigma i plus one sigma j minus 1, sigma j, and then inverses. All right. And so we have, well, we have a set of generators that contain the sigma i's, but that's larger, and that will be of interest uh, later on. Um, all right, Be before, um, so before we move to Coven of Zeidel and I could try to give you the definition, um, Coven of Zeidel is a categorical representation that has um, a decategorified meaning. Uh, so I'll tell you about this, uh, this representation uh, downstairs first. Yeah. And so this is the representation that Common of Zeidel categorify is, is the Burao representation, which 
I think goes back to 1934. Uh, so we have something very old and uh, uh, well studied, but not always well understood, uh, as we'll see. Okay, so um, I want to define so I want to define an action of um, of this big gamma, this r group, uh, C2 gamma, on um, on the vector space. And I'll take uh, of finite dimension here. So I'll take V to be the C Q uh, vector space generated by uh, formal vectors. Uh, I haven't given it the name. Uh, V1 <laughs> to uh, Vm. And n is the number of, um, of vertices. And the first thing is I'm going to define a pairing on this, uh, this vector space by saying, saying that um, vi and vj are going to pair to um, um, Which is uh, one plus q square if i and j are equal, um, zero if m i j equals two. So that means that we have i and j and no edge uh, between them. And then the tri the trickier one is uh, i j with m i j, and I want. I think I want minus 2q cosine of pi over mij. Um, the one that I will really care about later is actually mij equal 3. So then we have uh, cos pi over 3, which will be 1 half. And so that's just minus 1 if mij equal 3. Minus Q, thanks. All right. Okay, and from there I can define um, an action of uh, B gamma acts on uh, V by sigma I of V is um, V minus. Um, v i v v i. I think I realize I've changed notations. So I think that should be fine. Um, all right. So what what what's, what this formula is saying is just that you have somehow you choose um, you want to do right. This is just a, a reflection. Uh, the, the formula for a reflection in, in uh, a vector space with uh, with a pairing, right? So that shouldn't be scary. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and this is called uh, the Bourau representation. So I should say this is clearly not the original way uh, it was defined. Uh, it comes from uh, from algebraic topology, and you have. Uh, in cyclic covers and uh, homotopy, but uh, it's a fairly concise way to, 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 define, to define it. And it extends for any, any artist's group. 
And um, what I should say that this, the, the action factors through the Heckel algebra. So if, if you don't know what the Heckel algebra is, then uh, don't, don't bother. But uh, if you do, that might feel uh, like that might feel comforting. And the, the way it, arise, it arises is that um, if you take so take type A, take um, already have a V, uh, take M equal uh, the vector representation for UQSL two, and then one can take um, an M fold tensor product of, uh, of M, and there is a break group action on this, but this also decomposes in um, a sum of uh, weight spaces and the weights vary from uh, minus n to n by 2. And Burao is the n minus 2 weight space. Again, if you don't care for these things, uh, don't worry. It was just to, to um, help the zoo care. Um, so, um, Two, th two, two, uh, two important things. One is that we have, um, I can actually write down formulas for uh, the action of sigma i's on, uh, on the VJs. And the other one is that we, we know, we still don't know uh, everything about this representation, even in type A. So uh, so now um, so sigma i of vj equals uh, minus q square of uh, vj um, yeah, vi if i equals j equals vj minus q vi if i and j are, are related to the three, and um, vj if i and j are not related, and did I write, I think I did not even write the general m formula. Uh, let's restrict to uh, simply laced. Or, or one can work out the formula for the, the missing m's. Um, Okay, so we have something very explicit and very, very, very simple. Um, and so it's a theorem of a long pattern and big loom that um, this representation is, is uh, not good. So uh, Burao is not faithful. on, uh, well, anything that contains a uh, four as a subgraph. So um, what uh, long, long and pattern proved that the six trend break group, so type A5, is um, that the Brouwer representation is not faithful for on six trends. And Bigelow proved that it's not faithful on five trends. Uh, but um, it's not too hard, and uh, I'll give the, the uh, most complicated proof ever uh, a little bit uh, later. It's not too hard to prove that on three strands it's faithful. And so that leaves open the question of uh, what about four strands?
And surprisingly, it's still open. Uh, so it's been open for eight, 90 years. Uh, and so I, I, I'm short on time, so I won't say too much about that. But um, what we're talking about is for A3, we have um, three generators. So we have uh, three by three matrices. And we're asking if uh, a three by three matrix representation is, is uh, faithful or not. And John Beerman reduced that to um, just finding two specific matrices to two braids. And she asked whether or not these two matrices generate a free group. And we, we don't know the answer. Uh, all right. So that, um, right, that's probably a, a very intricate question. It's very easy to spend a lot of time on it as well and not find the answer. <laughs> OK, I have uh, 10 minutes to tell you about Covenant's idol, because I swore that I would stop before lunch. So um, luckily, Raf told us uh, some of the first ingredients for Covenant's idol representation, because I will be using um, some quotient of uh, the path algebra. Okay, so um, somehow one, of, I guess, one of the goals of this common of Zido uh, categorical representation is that uh, it's going to be faithful uh, at least in type uh, A, D, E, and affine type A, and perhaps a few other examples. Um, and so that should solve this uh, unfaithfulness issue that we had before. Um, it's, it's worth mentioning at, at the very, basically uh, the same year. Uh, both Cohen of Zydel um, and um, uh, sorry, there were two ways to solve this unfaithfulness um, issue. One was uh, using categorification by Cohen of and Zydel, and the other one is using um, some slightly more complicated um, linear representation that's called uh, Lorentz Kramer Bigelow. And uh, so that proved that. Um, braid groups are, are linear, and uh, somehow the, the two of them appear at the same time using diff very different techniques. But the question of how do they, um, what the, the interplay is, is still quite um, uh, mysterious as well. But so I'll just focus on this one and start with uh, zigzag algebras. And so to tell you the, the outline before, we have this action of B gamma on V, which is generated by uh, V1 to Vn, and also comes with this uh, pairing that, that we like. And so we want to find uh, some replacement for V by um, a category, so that if I take uh, K naught, I go back to, to the original uh, vector space. And I'd like to upgrade this action to an action here. And idly, um, one will want to have some analog of these generators and also some analog of the pairing, which is going to be just the, the home space uh, quantum dimension. Uh, and so um, this category C, is going to be the, the category, the homotopy category, so complex is up to homotopy, of um, A gamma graded projective modules. Uh, the VIs will, be, will correspond to simple pro uh, to, um, projective in, the, in, in decomposables. And as I said, this is going to be a graded dimension 
of home spaces. All right, so I have to give you all of the pieces um, for, it, for all of it to make sense, but that, that's the plan. So uh, this A gamma over here is uh, the zigzag algebra, so some quotient of, of the path algebra. Um, so pass of a double version of uh, of the, the um, uh, Dinkin diagram. So gamma bar is a double version of gamma, which means that whenever I had one unoriented uh, edge. I just make it into two opposite oriented um, edges. And we mod out by um, a set of relations, which are that I don't want to have lengths two paths that start and end at different places. Um, and I want to impose that all of my loops at a given uh, vertex are the same. All right. Um, what I should mention is that I'm only going to tell, to give definitions in the simply lays case. In the non simply lays, it's slightly trickier, and there are um, construction by uh, Likata for the free group. And uh, Ni and Hang, and so uh, Edmund Hang is in the in the room over here in type B and uh, B C. Um, okay, so uh, interesting. So interesting elements in in this algebra are the the EIs that uh, Raph already mentioned that are just the idempotents. given by uh, the staying at i path. Um, so we have this generating uh, i, i plus one, uh, and we have the, the, all of the loops, which are all the same, which I'll often denote xi. And so we can, uh, so there are several interesting gradings on that, that category. Um, so one is by pass lengths. So um, degree of EI is zero, degree of this is one and degree of xi is two. Uh, and we can make another one, if you remember about the choice of a coxeter element and orientation of the Dinkin diagram, we can uh, recall that orientation from the start and say that uh, we're only counting degree when we go against the preferred orientation. So if we had in the original gamma um, if we had chosen some orientation for the original gamma, then this path will have degree zero. But the one that goes backwards will have degree one. And so you can check that all relations are, are homogeneous with respect to that, that grading. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're almost there. Um, I'll, so I'll have uh, notations for this grading. For this one, I'll use um, angle brackets. And for this one, I'll use curly brackets for the shifts. Um, 
Okay, so because because of this idempotent that we have, we can find um, we can find indecomposable projectives in our category. I think I'll end in a minute. And right, so we can define left projective by simply taking a gamma and hitting that with uh, EI on the right. And these are paths that end at node I. And similarly, we have uh, right projectives, which are EI, A gamma, which are paths that uh, start at I. And so let me just state a lemma to tell you that we, we have nice home spaces between these, these things. And um, so home from PI to PJ is um, C plus, yeah, let's assume I work over C, C plus C uh, minus two if I equals J, um, C shifted by, so it's plus one, C shifted by one if I and J are, are related by an edge and um, zero otherwise. Oh. And Almost equivalently, um, we have formula for tensor products, which are that QI PJ over A equals C plus C2 if I equals J, C1 for IJ, and zero otherwise. Uh, and so the, all of this should be very reminiscent of what happened for the, uh, the bracket, uh, the pairing before. And I think I should stop now, right? Thanks. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, so, so for this tensor product uh, explanation of the of this representation, is there any result beyond point A? Um, so, uh, Bora, you can define anywhere. Um, I'm not to be honest. Like, I'm not sure what. Uh, yeah. Okay. I get. Uh, so, I, I, I'm going to say words that I don't understand. Uh, I think in in type. So, you need to find some analog of uh, Chauval duality. For yeah, uh, outside of type A, so I guess in algebra quantum group. So, so, the tab, tab, tab yeah, 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 yeah. I guess so. So like BM, BMW or. Okay. Thank you. I have one. So the Buchauk representation is related to the Alexander polynomial. Yeah. Um, going in that direction at all? Not at all. Uh, yeah. So the Alexander polynomial is the the determinant of uh, the Buchauk or something like that. I'm not saying anything stupid. Uh, it's not. No, basically, it's, it's not going to happen. One of the reasons that taking the determinant uh, at a categorical level is something we don't understand at all. So it's an interesting question, but we're not, we are not there. Okay. Any other questions? So let's thank you again.